Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Esselatu ve selamu ala Resulil Emin ve ala cemil enviyay vel mursalin. All praises due to God alone, the Lord of the universe and, and bless, peace and blessing be upon all of his prophets until the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, Esselamu Aleykum ve Rahmetullahi ve Berekatuhu. <coughs> Today's topic is about uh, freedom of speech or freedom of expression. And this is a very important topic, but there are a lot of disagreements about this topic among Muslim, Muslim brothers and sisters. So we'll talk about this one and also have some verses from the Quran, some examples of free, freedom of speech or freedom of expression from the Quranic point of view. And also we have some guidelines from some Quranic verses, which we as a Muslim, we are, uh, we should follow that guidelines, inshallah, we will be guided in the right path. I, uh, at the beginning, I want to place, uh, I want to play uh, a short uh, video, actually two short clips I have, uh, very short clips. I want to play that one, uh, share with you. The First Amendment gives Americans five basic freedoms, freedom of speech, press, petition, assembly, and religion. While all five are important, perhaps freedom of speech is talked about the most. Free speech is the cornerstone of our democracy. It not only protects the speech that people like, but speech that people don't. Because when it comes to free speech, either everyone is protected or no one is at all. So, when we say freedom of speech, actually, according to this clip, either everybody free uh, to express themselves, or if we uh, censor that the, uh, the expression, actually, we actually we there is no freedom of speech, and uh, this is uh, this is really a uh, really important uh, thing. In that other video, also the very, very short video, but uh, this one from uh, Professor Tariq Ramadan, uh, actually. And I would say, because you were speaking about Muslim majority countries and the West, my take on what is happening in the West, as well as at what is happening in Muslim majority countries is that we need to be clear, freedom of expression should be protected in Muslim majority countries as well as in the West. For me, there is no double standard. Was there one week after the cartoon uh, controversy started, I said to the Muslim, this is my sentence, the phrase I put it, take an intellectual critical distance. Don't react to this, just say you don't like it, but this is part of the debate in France or in Denmark or in Europe. To the point that what we have to acknowledge is that in France, as well as in Denmark and then in the Netherlands, if, and even here in this country, in the UK, the Muslims, when they are dealing with uh, criticism, their reaction is in majority quite reasonable. They are not today. It's not the same as when uh, uh, it happened with Salman Rushdie. So, uh, in this, in this uh, short videos, <clears throat> It shows, especially uh, Tariq Ramadan actually uh, brought up the incident happened five years ago or six years ago in France. And lately also, unfortunately, it happened in France and some people got killed, especially three, four days ago, three people, innocent people got killed because of uh, that uh, kind of violence. Uh, and uh, I mentioned at the beginning that there are some examples of free speech in the Quran. I want to share that one with you. It's a very uh, common verse in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 30. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa id qalna rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. And lo, 
the angel say, uh, Allah, uh, God said to the angels that I'm about to establish on earth someone or one who shall inherit it, a Khalifa, a vicegerent. In what the angels said, Qalu, they said, Atajalu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfikud bima. Uh, uh, will you, the angels express themselves actually before God, before all God Almighty. He said, they said, will you establish on it, on the earth, someone to spread corruption and shed blood? So this is a very good examples in the Quran we have. Because the angels, although it is symbolic, but the Quran gave us uh, a lesson to, to follow. Because Quran says religious of, uh, I mean, uh, freedom of speech or freedom of expression should be, uh, should be allowed totally, actually. Everybody has the right to do, to express themselves in this verse. And also, in another verse also, in the same chapter, verse 260, about the uh, story of Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when it says, it's uh, called Ibrahim uh, or Rabbi Arani, Arani, kaifa tuhyel mauta. And though Ibrahim said uh, to his Lord, oh, oh my Lord, show me, Arani, Actually, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show me how you give life to the dead. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is, it is free expression. Yes, it's a very good example of free expression in the Quran. At the first example, God Almighty didn't punish the angels because they express themselves freely and not only express themselves actually uh, it was god's will that he establish he is about to establish on earth someone to inherit it but the angels express themselves that well will you uh, establish someone to uh, you know shed blood and spread corruption on earth this is against god's will actually but God allowed them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them in order to give us a good lesson to, uh, for uh, freedom of speech. In the second incident also, the uh, story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, God Almighty asked him when he expressed himself that how you give life to the dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, uh, say to him, actually, uh, say to him, uh, awalam tu'min, awalam tu'min, have you then no faith? You don't believe in it? And Ibrahim replied, walakin liyatma'inna qalbi. I have faith, but just I want to see it, how you do that, in order to, you know, just uh, I want my heart to uh, fully set uh, in uh, right, actually, being uh, it mean on or uh, to be sure, actually. So this is another exam example of free expression, uh, freedom of uh, speech or freedom of expression in the Quran. So that's a good example to follow. But be, uh, go beyond that, actually. Quran says in chapter four, chapter four, which is Surah An-Nisa, verse 140. It says, Verse 140, Surah An-Nisa, verse 140. People deny the truth of God's messages. Yukfaru biha. Deny the truth of God's messages. Not only that, 
وَيُسْتَهْزَ اُبِهَا In mock at them. Like in this uh, friend's example, uh, making cartoons of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you consider that one mockery, which is, which is mocking. So making, making cartoons of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or some other places they burn the Quran. So this is, Quran is a sign of, uh, sign of God. Uh, the prophets, all of prophets are signs of God. So Quran gave us the guideline how to do and what to do actually in that kind of situation. If you remember the first clip I put, uh, that freedom of speech is either there is freedom of speech or there is no freedom of speech. Because we don't know where to put the borderline. If we say, okay, for example, uh, nobody should make cartoons of a prophet. This is the borderline. If we are living in the West, in the West we are uh, we are in, we can put the borderline there, but in some other countries or some Muslim com communities in some other liberal uh, Islamic countries, actually, even if you say that Islam is uh, not a religion of peace, that might be offensive for them. It might be offensive and they might uh, react uh, violently. Why you say against Islam such a statement? So this is why it is very, very difficult very difficult to place the borderline where to place the borderline but the Quran beautifully in this verse in chapter 4 verse 140 mentioned that when you hear people deny the truth of God's messages and mock at them it says فَلَا تَقْعُدُوا مَعَهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُودُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِهِ and you shall avoid their company until they begin to talk of other things. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't ask us to cut off our relationship with that group. Maybe they are part of our family. Maybe they are friends. But they just did something which is offensive. Quran says, avoid their company temporarily. Just for a few minutes, go outside. And you can, you can join them again when they change the subject. So their normal, uh, normal talk starts again and we can join and uh, sit with them and uh, try, to, try to make a relationship, uh, friendship with them. And, and some other time if we can talk about these things and build up friendship, good friendship and uh, mutual respect with each other. In that case, we probably tell them that, uh, well, mocking not only our prophet or our Quran scripture, but also any prophet or any scripture, it's kind of hurtful to those who believe in that prophet or those who believe in that scripture. So Quran makes it clear beautiful verses. Sometimes I hear from some even Muslims uh, that they said, well, uh, this is uh, uh, maybe some, some verses in uh, Mecca. So in Mecca, Prophet was, uh, didn't have the power, and, uh, but in Medina was different. No, this is the Surah Madani. Surah Nisa is Surah Madani and revealed in Medina uh, in fourth or fifth year of Hijrah actually. In Quran Allah says, well, you can join them until they, when, when they change their subject, you can join them or else you shall become like them. So what that means, it means that if we, we are sitting there and they are mocking or they are mocking our, the prophet or scripture or anything, anything else uh, belong to religion. If we sit with them and talk with them and listen to them, so in that case, we are part of them. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to leave temporarily and just ignore it.
Or if you are listening to a uh, video, uh, I mean, a show or something, and uh, they do that, just we can switch the show and uh, just go and watch another video or another talk or anything else. And I should mention according to Quran, my humble understanding from Quran actually, uh, using violence or using violence in these cases is absolutely not Quranic. Quran doesn't allow us to use violence, but Quran has the solution. And that solution is just to ignore, leave it. Just, just leave it, go, go somewhere else. And you see some, something else. This is very, very clear in this verse. And also, there are verses uh, in the Quran uh, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet and said to the Prophet actually in Surah Al-Qaf 50, Surah 50, the last verse, نَحْنُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَقُلُونَ Because people mock, uh, maybe mocking at the Prophet, Say, uh, saying something that hurting the prophet actually, Quran clear. Uh, Quran makes uh, makes it known actually. Uh, it is uh, clear in the Quran. They used to say to the prophet, Sahir, which is magician, or Kahin, or uh, Majnoon, which is you know not sound or not saint, um, or uh, crazy. See, on these these wor words actually they are and they are offensive. They used to tell the prophet, and Quran says, "Nahnu a'lamu bima yaqulun." We are fully aware of what they say to you. Wa ma anta alayhim bijabbar. But you, O prophet, in no by no means. You have no right to use violence against them, to use force against them. فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ You only remind them with this Qur'an, remind them, remind those who fear the warning, my warning, God says. This so Quran so teach us peacefully a way a solution actually solution for that matter why we Muslims just uh, just go and use violence against something I heard some uh, <clears throat> a clip that in uh, Britain a lady was slapped on her face. Christian lady actually he, he was she was a Muslim and converted to Christianity and talking in uh, speaker's corner very famous a speaker's corner in uh, uh, London and someone uh, slapped her on her face actually because she said something that was offensive to that person in Quran says clearly just just it, it is offensive to you, just don't be part of them, just go away. Don't listen to her. Why? Because, because this does not help. We try to, we try to do something in order to, and we think that we can defend our prophet, we can defend our scripture. No, we are not defending. We are hurting our prophet. We are hurting our religion by by uh, by this using vi uh, violence. It's hurting. It's not defending. Why we we do need to defend? Actually, God is God is there. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is watching. He knows everything. If He wants to defend, He can do that. In Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Verily, God has the power to will anything. So he can do that if he wants to. 
But also, as I mentioned, that is not helping, but it's hurting because what happened? We use violence again in these cases and that, uh, and we are happy that, well, we are defending our prophet now. This is, we are living in 21st century in media and everything, everybody knows in all on the corner of the world, everybody knows what happened. Do you think everybody feel good about this one? Well, in, I mean, non-Muslims, majority of uh, the population, earth population, non-Muslims, they feel good? No, they feel bad. They feel bad even we defame our prophet, we defame our Quran in our religion, in that case. Although we think that uh, we are sincere, we want to help. No, it's not help. It is not help. It's hurting. So we have to, we have to avoid that one. Avoid violence in any kind. There is no violence uh, is not Islamic to respond in violence. We have to, we live in the uh, Western countries. If we don't like it, just we ignore it and go somewhere else. And also Quran says in another verses in uh, chapter 88, Surah al it says to the Prophet, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ O Prophet, exhort them, exhort them, exhort the people. And your task is only to exhort. إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْتِرْ You have no power to control them or you cannot compel them to believe that what you believe. Isn't, isn't, isn't our Quran isn't clear? It's very clear. Why we don't do that? Why we not follow the Quranic uh, guidelines? If you are not following the Quran guidelines, how can we claim to be a good Muslim? Because Quran is our main source, unique source. So if we come back to our Quran, and see what the Quran says, directions, what directions give it, give it to us. In that case, our, uh, we, will be, we will be happy. And also we will uh, make friendship uh, with other people. I mean, those who are not Muslims. And if we act like that, I mean, Quranically, if we act peacefully and just avoid uh, that kind of situation and leave them temporarily and then come back and join them and discuss. If we want to debate, we can debate peacefully. We can talk, we can laugh, we can join friendship and mutual respect in education. This is very important to, uh, <clears throat> to build uh, friendship with them. What I think, if we build friendship with non-Muslims, they might, they might change a little bit. They might change. They should not, they, they think that probably they will think uh, that probably it's not good to mock a prophet, although they are not believing in that prophet, they are not believing in that scripture, but they might be convinced by our deeds and our action, they will be convinced that they are good people, good Muslims, peaceful Muslims. They believe in, uh, in that prophet. They believe in that scripture. So we don't want to say something hurtful to them. So I think, that I think uh, if we choose this kind of approach, it might help. <clears throat> I'm sure that definitely it helped a little bit or a little bit more. But definitely I can say if we use violence, again in such, such situations, it's not only helping, but it's hurting. 
are the cause of Islam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and also <coughs> hurting the feeling of peaceful Muslims in the entire world. So we try to do our best, inshallah, to return to our Quran, see what the Quran says, because there are some, some narrations, weak narrations, unauthentic narrations, which uh, probably say something like that to act violently, and that's absolutely against the Quran, and absolutely that was not hadith of the Prophet, it's just made up so many fabrications. We all know that. And we we talk, inshallah, in the future about these things, that so many of these narrations, false narrations attributed to the Prophet, and it's uh, the Prophet was unaware at all. Because it's not Quranic, we can reject it totally, absolutely, uh, if, it's, if it that contradicts with the Quran. Because Quran is our unique and main source. Inshallah, we will be rightly guided. So uh, we'll talk inshallah in the future. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.